this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network, and I would love to share with you now some unbelievable Sukkot Torah, some great Torah on the holiday of Sukkot. So here we go. Now, I have some photocopies here, because if I would bring all the Sfarim, all of the Torah works, uh, that I'm going to try to bring very quickly in this concise format, it will be a little bit heavy to carry. So here we go. So I got some photocopies for you. There's a commentary, a halachic work called the Tor, and the Tor in the section Arachayim 417 says as follows. He says that each of the Avois, each of the patriarchs, corresponds to one of the Shalash Regalim, one of the three main pilgrimage holidays to Yerushalayim. Okay? There's three of the Shalash Regalim of those big holidays. One is Pesach, Sukkis and Shavuot. So, says the tour, Avram Avinu corresponds to Passover, to Pesach. Shavuot corresponds to Yitzchak. And Sukkis is Keneged Yaakov. Now, we're not going to speak about now what Abraham has to do with, with Passover, with Pesach, and Yitzchak, with Shavuot. The Torah speaks about it, but let's speak about this. Sukkis is Yaakov. Sukkis is Keneged Yaakov. The Torah says it in Arachayim. The, that's what he says. Now, my question for you is why? What is the deep philosophical, spiritual connection between Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, that patriarch, and Sukkis? Now, so the Torah brings a verse. He says, Dichsiv, and he brings from a Pasuk in the book of Bereshis, chapter 3. 33, verse 17, and the Pusik says, that Yaakov Avinu, he made for his cattle, for his mikneh, he made sukkis. It's a verse in the Torah that says, Yaakov, that Yaakov traveled to a place called sukkis, but even though bias, he built himself a house, and his for his flock, he asa sukkis, and he made sukkahs, and therefore he called the place sukkis. So what is the, the, at the simplest level, what the Torah is saying is that because there's a verse in the Torah that talks about Yaakov and sukkis. He went to a place called sukkis. He made himself a house. For, for his flock, he built sukkahs. He put his, he put his flock, his animals in sukkahs, and he called the place sukkis. So therefore Yaakov is sukkis. But what's the depth over here? What is the deeper idea that we're trying to say? What's the deeper idea we're trying to bring out? Okay, I'll give you another question or two. Um, if you look in the, in the, in the benching, in the Brikadama zone, that after we have a bread meal at this time of year, we say there's a harachaman, uh, may the merciful one, like an insert we say, and we say harachaman hu yakim lanu as sukkas, as sukkas david hanai falas. It's a song, harachaman hu yakim lanu as sukkas david hanai falas. I'm not going to sing for you, but my, my, my camera person, my, my dear wife is actually laughing at me right now, hoping I will not sing. But it's okay. So what does that mean? Harachaman hu yakim lanu. We ask that the merciful one, Hashem, hu yakim lanu, he should erect for us as sukkahs David, the sukkah of King David, hanayfolis, that fell over. What is the sukkah of King David that fell over? And that is going on the Beis HaMikdash. David HaMelech and King Solomon made the first temple. And, and we call it, from the time of the sages on, we call it the Sukkot David HaNefalis. It's like the Sukkah of King David that fell over. I have a question for you. A lot of people sing this every year. They read this every year and they never ask the question. Why is the Holy Temple, which is a permanent eternal edifice, supposed to be if we didn't do sins, why is that called a Sukkah? A Sukkah is temporary. A Sukkah is not supposed to last. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Why is the base Hamikdash, the holy temple in Yerushalayim, called a sukkah? That's my question. I want to ask you. So I'm going to tie it together based on a commentary of Rav Chaim Vital and something that the Targum, ben, uh, Targum Yenis Ben Uziel says. And we're going to tie this together. And I'm going to just try to answer this up in one short and sweet clip as fast as I can because there's a lot of information here and you can work on it. But here's the point, okay? So what does it say? Vayakov Nasa Sukkot said. The verse said that Yaakov traveled to a place called Sukkis, Vayiman Lobais, and he built himself a house. It says in the verse, he built himself a house, and for his animals, he built a sukkah and put them in the sukkah. Why did he build himself a house? So the Targum Yonas and Ben Uziel says this is the house he built. Uvna lay be medrasha. Yaakov Avinu built for himself a base medrash. He built for himself like a yeshiva, a kolel, a base medrash. That's what Yaakov Avinu built. So he didn't just build himself a house, he built himself a base medrash to sit and learn Torah. And then he put his animals, his mikne, his flock in the in the sukkah. So what is this about? So here's what I'm going to tell you. Bottom line, I think the vard is over here, and it's a geshmaka terra. It's a, a, a very interesting, delicious piece of tire. And the answer is this. Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our forefather, 
is the, from, in my opinion, from all of the Avois, is the one who primarily teaches us the proper Torah Hashkafa, the proper Torah outlook of money, how to deal with money, how to relate to Gashmias, how to relate to material possessions. For example, we find this the famous Gemara in Hulin, that's how the Aleph, about Yaakov went back for the Pachim Katanim, for the little jars, and we see from here how what money means to a righteous person. Yaakov, from the patriarchs, is the one, in my opinion, who most is teaching us about how a Torah Jew relates to money and material possessions and Gashmias. So what does this have to do with Sukkis? So I've already said in a different clip, a different short tweet, you should check it out. The Malbim and others, uh, Rav Chaim Vital speaks about this. A lot of them do. A lot of the commentaries do. That why is it called, why, why are we outside in a Sukkah now? The answer is because when our house is being filled with good things during the harvest time, we go outside to have the proper Hashkafa. Why is it, I would suggest to you, that Yaakov Avinu, he, he built a base medrash and he put his mikna, his flock, in the, in the sukkah? The answer is a flock, certainly about 4,000 years ago, it, it was basically his stock, his bonds, his money, his retirement account. That's money, that's guilt, okay? And what did he do? He put it in a sukkah. A sukkah basically what affords a person the opportunity to relate to their material possessions and understand, just like a sukkah comes and goes, material possessions come and go. And by putting your money, your wealth, in a sukkah, which is what Yaakov Avinu did, it's basically saying he wanted to relate to it, understanding it with a sukkah perspective. What is real and what is permanent and what is the point of having money? It's a directive for spiritual accomplishment. That's in fact why he went back for the little jars we find in the book of Horatius, the Gemara and Chulin says. And why did he build a base medrash? A base medrash is a place where a person basically is able to anchor himself in Torah Hashkafa and Torah outlook and a Torah way of life. So when he, Yaakov, became wealthy, he put himself in a base medrash. He built himself a base medrash. He puts his wealth in a sukkah. He knew he'd be able to keep in mind what he had to. So, and I think that's really comes to the core of what sukkah is about. One last thing. What does that have to do with harachaman or yachim lana or sukkah's david and falas? Why is the base hamikdash compared to a sukkah? So I would suggest to you the answer is very simple. What the sukkah affords a person seven days a year to relate to, basically, how do I relate to the material world? How do I relate to the physical world? What is temporary? What is fleeting? What is not? How do I relate to Gashmias? That's what the sukkah is there to, to, to basically give over to a person. The Beis HaMikdash, the holy temple in Yerushalayim, would give a person that ability, that lens, that view Anytime you would visit. You could go visit the Beis HaMikdash in the time when it stood and then again in the future. You could go during Sukkot. You could go during Rosh Hashanah. You could go in the, uh, on a Tuesday in November. You could go whenever you would go. You'd always have the Sukkah perspective. So that's why... So yeah, of course, the Beis HaMikdash is supposed to be permanent and forever, and the Sukkah is supposed to be temporary, but that's okay, because the reason that the Sukkah is comparable to the Beis HaMikdash is the Hashkafa Shabbat, the outlook and perspective that the, that the Sukkah affords, the Beis HaMikdash would give a person all the time, and we look forward to the day when the Beis HaMikdash will be rebuilt, and it will become so much more easy, so much more easy in life to go through life and understanding what are we supposed to do with our material possessions, why did God give it to us, and make sure we direct them correctly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's short and sweet. This is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman, the Jewish Executive Learning Network. I hope you will follow the Shi'ura Matorah anytime. Share them with others. It's some great Taira over here. And I hope you'll also check out my brand new channel on YouTube. Thank you so much.